Hello, dear friends, and welcome to another session of Pulmonology Read Aloud. Today, I'm here to discuss a very important uh, topic, something that we deal a lot of times in our practice. And even if we are not oncologists, but we are practicing pulmonologists, we have to answer our patients and we have to answer uh, calls for second opinion sometimes where we would want to know whether a surgical resection is needed, not needed, follow-up needed or not needed. So I am talking about incidentally detected solitary pulmonary nodules. And now I'm here I'm specifying incidentally detected because uh, what I'm going to read aloud quickly for you are the guidelines for patients who are not lung cancer screening patients they are not patients who are known high risk patients for cancer, but just the patients where a CT scan done for some other reason or an extra done for some other reason shows a solitary pulmonary nodule and we have to take a call on when to follow up. So I'm here to make these guidelines simple and easily rememberable for you. And so let's get started. So first of all, Remember one thumb rule and the thumb rule is that for typically benign looking lesion, we know what are benign looking lesions, benign looking lesions are the ones which are either smaller in size, uh, the ones which are not changing in the past, uh, the ones with calcifications, uh, these typical benign looking lesions, we usually will not recommend any workup for lesions where there is a strong suspicion of malignancy the ones with speculated borders, the ones who are large enough, uh, the ones who are aggressive, who were not there in the previous scan. Obviously, we have to refer the patient for resection, biopsy, so a surgical opinion has to be taken. And for intermediate probability region, uh, lesions, which are the majority and which are the most complex, that is where the problem arises. So let's quickly see what do we have to interpret this. So these are the updated Fleshner Society guidelines for incidental pulmonary nodules, a free access article which can be referred to. It gives a lot of common scenarios, case case basis, which can help you understand in case you are met with this question of whether this lesion needs to be followed up or not. So I'm going to quickly brief it out in the next two minutes. So Flesh Society recommendations were updated in 2017. And according to these lesions, first of all, we need to know the probability of cancer in any patient by knowing whether he is a high risk patient or he's a low risk patient. So high risk patient typically, remember, is the one who's elderly, the one who is preferably actually females are considered high risk, ones who have a lung cancer history, um, now black male or a native Hawaiian male, patients where there is upper lobe location, something very important, patient where there is speculation, patients with radiographic emphysema, and by that, probably because he's a COPD, so he must be a smoker also, so his probability of cancer is more. Very interesting is patients of IPF, so, Probably a strong correlation between IPF and cancer. Patients obviously with a high pack year history of smoking or smoking, smoking for 15 years or more and patients with occupational exposure risking cancers. So very easy, elderly or patients who have an occupational exposure, enough smoking history, IPF patients, emphysema patients, upper lobe location and speculative nodules as we all know. So the Fleshman Society has given this very beautiful table which is actually all that we need to know and I'm going to break this up into one single slide so that you know what to do next time you have such a patient. So basically you divide your nodule into whether it's a solid nodule or a subsolid nodule. Now solid nodules Again, you have to see whether it's a single nodule or it's a multiple nodule. And whichever kind it is, patient is a low risk or a high risk case, low risk or a high risk case. So generally, 
remember this number 6 mm so nodules which are less than 6 mm nodules which are 6 to 8 mm and nodules which are more than 8 mm so no prizes for guessing nodules which are more than 8 mm whether they are low risk or high risk patients they have a high probability of malignancy so follow up is a must so nodule more than 8 mm follow up is a must you have to consider a ct scan or a pet ct or tissue sampling the only difference is that at three months of detection whether a low risk case or a high risk case you have to do a ct scan if it's a single nodule and again if it's a multiple nodule then the first ct will be at three to six months and then it will be repeated in a year or so so first ct in three to six months and second ct in one to one and a half years if it is an intermediate nodule neither too big nor too small then in a low risk or a high risk case if the nodule is single if it's intermediate we still have to repeat a ct scan and this time instead of three or six months we can take it up to a year or so depending on whether the patient has much risk or not so for a single nodule you can wait for six months to 12 months and then consider a ct and however if it was an intermediate nodule six to eight mm you have to do one more ct just like a big nodule which will be at one and a half to two years time the same thing is holding true for multiple nodules the only difference is if there are multiple intermediate nodules we are not waiting for six to twelve months we are doing the ct scan earlier so remember the first ct here will be as soon as possible three to six months then you can do the second one at 18 to 24 months if there is no change for patients who have very small nodules less than 6 mm in case they are low risk patients whether single or multiple no need to follow them up no routine follow -up. but if they are high risk patients what should we do ask them and give them an option that because your nodule is too small there is an option that we can do a ct next year because you're a high risk patient but the guidelines do not mandate following up every less than 6 mm nodule at one year for a patient so in a nutshell anything less than 6 mm no routine follow up in a low risk patient for a high risk patient you have suspicious nodule then at least in a year make sure you do a follow up and when you're dealing with multiple nodules the most suspicious nodule should be our guide for management amongst all the available nodules and the follow ups will vary according to the size and the risk that we noted for sub solid nodules the algorithm is simple it's either less than six or more than six so if the nodule is less than six mm and it is just a single ground glass then you need not routinely follow it but if it's a large ground glass nodule more than six mm we have to make sure that by the end of the year a ct is available so that we can follow it up to confirm whether this ground glass nodule is persisting and then if it is persisting we can do a ct scan every two years until five years now if it was not ground glass if it was partly solid but single partly solid and partly ground glass again if it's a very small nodule don't do anything but if it is a more than 6 mm nodule you do a ct scan sooner so if it's partly solid, so solid nodule being the problematic thing here, then the CT will not wait for a year. It has to be done within six months time. And if the lesion is not changed, it is still less than six mm, then you just repeat CT every year till five years. If we are dealing with multiple subsolid nodules, then the first CT is being done at three to six months. So we cannot risk multiple subsolid ones. So three to six months of first CT. If the lesion is stable, 
we do another CT at two euros, four euros. So we are following this up and we are very careful about multiple subsolid nodules. And if they are larger in size, so then we are ought to be we ought to be more more cautious. So here again, the CT has to be repeated at three to six months, and then we just see how it is it the most suspicious nodule is it growing or not growing. And since we are doing a repeat CT at two and four years, uh, it can still be done based on the risk of the patient. So let's summarize. So for subsolid nodules. If they are suspicious and less than 6 mm, you have to follow them up. You have to follow them up if they are suspicious and if they are more than 6 mm. If they are less than 6 mm, routine follow up is not advised. If the nodule solid component is developing or growth is occurring, then you have to refer your patient for a section. Because a subsolid nodule changing to solid nodule is not good. If it's a partly solid nodule, partly solid nodules, usually less than 6 mm, no routine follow up. But persistently partly solid nodule, still visible at 3 to 6 months, has to be followed. And if it is persistently solid, uh, subsolid and changing into solid, we have to recommend surgical evaluation. For multiple nodules, if they are less than 6 mm, they are just pure ground glass nodules, nothing really is suspected here. And however, you can still follow them up at two years and four years. So in a nutshell, this is one go-to table that you can always refer to whenever you are met with such a situation. However, let me just simplify. So amongst the solid nodules, which are the ones that we mostly encounter problematic, here three divisions, less than six, six to eight and more than eight, less than six, low risk, high risk, single or multiple. So if it's less than six mm, but a low risk patient, that's okay. If it is a high risk patient, you can tell them that since you have a high risk, Let's repeat a CT next year. But when it is more than 6 mm, 6 to 8 mm, we have to make sure that within 6 months to 12 months, we are repeating a CT scan, whether a low risk or a high risk. And then we have to reconsider CT scan by 18 to 24 months. But if it's multiple nodules, we repeat a scan earlier and then also we consider a CT. If it's more than 8 mm, we have to follow this even if it's single, and we have to consider a pet biopsy. And if they are multiple, again, we have to follow them. Consider a repeat CT, and if they are increasing in size, we have to consider, again, surgical biopsies. Let's go to this now. So this is one report that I recently saw, and uh, it's it's... A very good example of how you may be met with such a situation where you have to take a call. Uh, this gentleman underwent a CT coronary angiography for his heart condition, and the radiologist mentioned a well defined soft tissue nodule with a tiny internal calcification in left low low and uh, approximately 19 by 19 mm with a good HU of 68. So now this patient comes to you and says, Doc, my cardiologist has seen my case, but I want you to tell me about this lung nodule. Do I have cancer? And now if you notice, it's a 19 mm nodule. He's a cardiac patient. He's also a smoker. He's an elderly patient. And he had smoked more than 15 years of pack years of cigarettes. So what do we do now? So let's go back. So it's a more than 8 mm nodule. He's a high risk patient with a single nodule. We have to consider follow up and tell him that we have to repeat a CT in three months. The nodule stays. We do a PET CT and biopsy. And we make sure we follow up our patient. So this is how we can come to the a conclusion of how to go about in these patients. 
and talk, now let's let me just brief you on ACCP recommendations. Again, we have to calculate the pretest probability. We have to review the old scans. If it's a solid lesion, two years follow up, nothing has happened, no follow up needed. If it's a benign lesion, no follow up needed. Let's come to this chart on final uh, pathway. Again, uh, this is taken from the Kleshner guidelines. So if you see an SPN and your CT chest is indeterminate, then you have to stratify the risk dividing into more than eight. Four to eight is if in this case, but it's actually more than eight, six to eight, and less than six. You can define it that way also. Now more than eight, we are following it up, we are repeating a CT at three months, and we are doing a PET CT or biopsy. If the uptake is high or a positive biopsy, we're sending them for surgery. If it's an intermediate nodule or a patient, again, in an intermediate nodule is a high-risk patient, then we are repeating the CT sooner. If only if the biopsy is negative, then we may not follow him. Otherwise, again, we'll follow up this patient for change in size, preferring for surgery. For low-risk patients, no follow-up required. According to ACCP, for 8 to 30 mm lesions, very low probability of cancer. You should still repeat the scan at 3, 6, 9 to 12, or 18 to 24 months. For low to moderate probability, do a PET. For high probability, just send them for surgical resection, then 8 mm. Unequivocal growth, we need a biopsy. Let's conclude and end this talk with an example. So here you see multiple images. The first one is actually a right upper leg nodule. If you see, then this nodule has some lobulation. This was proven to be an adenocarcinoma on uh, post-op analysis. So this lobulated nodule turned out to be malignant. Here you see a right lower lobe nodule. Now again, this nodule has lobulations. It has pleural indentations, vacuole sign, and in this patient, the bronchus was actually truncated at the nodule boundary. But this, if you see, this turned out to be a squamous cell carcinoma. Speculations, pleural attachments, bronchus sign. The third image that you see here is a left upper lobe nodule. It also has lobulations. It has a specular sign at the boundary. It has a vacuole sign. It turned out to be an adenocarcinoma of the lung. This nodule that we see is a left upper lobe nodule. It is surrounded by numerous blood vessels towards the nodule. So when vessels converge towards the nodule, it's called vessel convergence sign. And this convergence of the vessel also tells us that it is a malignant nodule. So this nodule turned out to be a squamous cell carcinoma. Coming here, now this nodule is a right upper lobe nodule with specular sign and again a pleural indentation, adenocarcinoma. This nodule here you see is a right upper lobe nodule with a vacuole sign inside. It was a squamous carcinoma, a right lower lobe nodule. This one has a smooth boundary. You can easily see calcification, popcorn calcification. This was a pulmonary hematoma. And a left lower lobe nodule, again a smooth nodule with a smooth boundary, uniform density. It is related to a periphery blood vessel. It turned out to be sclerosing hemangium. So next time we come across a CT report mentioning lung nodule, be sure to refer back to the size, to the risk, and to the guidelines so that you give the right answer to your patient. Thank you and see you soon with another interesting topic.